Okay, good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining us again. And um, thank God we uh, try to take care of the technical difficulties we had last time. So um, we're going to start on time. So I, I want to start off with a um, with, with two quotes today. I want to talk about the two quotes a little bit, um, and then we're gonna we're gonna start a new um, chapter, chapter four, on page one forty eight. Um, we're gonna we're gonna just go straight there. Um, and uh, but I, I just want to talk about two quotes. If you look at page one, we we haven't done quotes in a little while, right? If you look at page one forty three, right, the quote is like this, and this is comes from uh, you know. Uh, it's actually, it's, it's, it's a very important quote. It says like this, better to experience embar embarrassment on this world than to be shamed in the world to come before the entire heavenly assembly, right? Um, and, and this is not only for Lashon Hara, but let's first just talk about it for Lashon Hara. You know, one of the big things that we sort of stop us from either stopping other people from speaking Lashon Hara or from you know, in, for, from us going ahead and speaking lashon hara, is the idea of peer pressure, right? And if you're going to say, well, I'm a self confident kind of person, peer pressure never affects me, right? Like, uh, let's be honest, peer pressure affects all of us. Doesn't make a difference how self confident we are. Doesn't make a difference how, you know, how. how Good we are, or outgoing, or or healthy we are. There is always a level of peer pressure. If it's from close friends, it's from a spouse, if it's from family, if it's from coworkers, there's always some level of peer pressure, and that could be either for the good, right? You know, people are doing good things. Where there's a a charity going on, and there's like a little peer pressure to uh, to give charity. Of course, within your means, it's bad when you you know you feel you have to give more than you're able to, and you uh, hurt your own family and yourself. Right? But you know, within your means, it's always good, and that's the idea. Actually, you know, that's why we try to. Um, you know, I've had many times where donors said, you know, I just want to stay quiet, whatever it is, and and I I asked them, you know, I respect you know, your desire. And of course, you know, we will, uh, you know, do that. But would it be okay if we could write your name on a flyer or, you know, mention because when other people hear other people go giving, there is that little, oh, that person gave so much or that person did that, you know, okay, I have to do something also, right? That's where peer pressure is good. You know, you might not want to call it peer pressure. You want to call it something else, enticement or stay within a certain category, whatever way you want to call it. Bottom line is it's a form of peer pressure. And, and that's when peer pressure is in a good way. Um, you know, we're taking on different, uh, in a group of people, right? We're taking on a certain thing to learn or a certain mitzvah. You know, what are you taking? I'm going to take on to, you know, where, uh, where my yama call day. Okay. For me, that's, that's what I do anyway. So that's like, Hey, thanks rabbi. Right. But you guys are supposed to take something on. That's a little hard for you. Let's, I decide to take on whatever. Right. And someone else says, so another person, you know, feels like he has to do something also, right? Because he's in Group and everybody's taking something on, and so so the idea of peer pressure is not always necessarily bad. God created this concept in the world, just like everything in the world has good and bad to it. Everything in the world has good and bad to it. Right? Excuse me. So too, right? God created that this idea of feeling to need part of something or whatever it is, and other people doing things has good and bad to it also. On the good point, as we just said giving more charity, taking on a mitzvah, learning a little more, being part of a group, but whatever it is, right? You know, that's all part of the positive uh, way of doing it. But unfortunately, right, there's also that negative uh, component, which is typically dominates uh, the peer pressure um, to do something negative. So, you know, teenagers, it's to do something silly, you know, to uh, spray paint someone or to, uh, you know, go to a store and act really weird or, you know, that's an extreme, right? Um, but in day-to-day in -day lives, we have it all the time, right? That we are part of a group, you're at a kiddish, right? You're, uh, you're, at, uh, you're hanging out with some friends and, and, you know, they're talking. You feel a little bit as healthy as you are. Sometimes you feel like you need a, add to the conversation. Otherwise you're just that like 
loan her in the back, right? Or you feel like, you know, I, I don't want to say anything, you know, uh, who, 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 you know, if I'm going to say something, then the people are going to look at me like funny or whatever it is, right? So, right? So we have to ask ourselves, right? How much does your how much does your happiness your happiness and your self esteem rest in other people's approval? Right, we have to ask ourselves how much does other people's your happiness and self esteem rest in other people's approval? That is the way to t- to tell how much you you're reliant on 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 peer pressure. Or, you know, you you don't want to call it peer pressure, right? Um, I'm a healthy person, but how much does it rely on other people's approval? And and it is to a certain degree everybody's approval. As we said, it could be for good also. So one of the ways to make sure to overcome this, uh, this need to have other people approving you, uh, your, the approval of other people, even on a lower scale, not in a crazy way, right? Only a couple of close friends or whatever it is. Uh, in essence, you're the healthy person. A lot of people want your approval also. But again, if anybody tells you that they don't need anybody else's approval at all, right? they either have some mental deficiency or they're lying or because we all, and I know myself also, I, I, I'm, I'm a very self-sustained person, right? Uh, you know, but at the same time, you still want someone's approval. You want, you know, you feel good. It feels good when other people, uh, you're part of something, whatever it is. So one of the ways to make sure that you don't fall into the trap of, of make, of, of this, needing the approval or the peer pressure, right? Or, you know, that experience in a negative way for something negative is this quote on page 143. And let's say it again, better to experience embarrassment on this world right, than the shame in the world to come before the entire heavenly assembly. And, and this is for everything. So, you know, uh, Lashon Hara, you're with a group of friends, or you're at the uh, Shabbos table, uh, you know, you're, uh, you're uh, having a barbecue with some friends on a Sunday or whatever it is, right? So you, people are starting to talk. And if you say something, they matter, hey, you're like sitting there. Oh, really? You don't want to talk? Oh, listen, it's not really, I just to feel a little bit embarrassment in this world, right? Then in front of the heavenly assembly. And, 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 and when we repeat ourselves and, and remind ourselves that the world we live in is a temporary world, right? And, 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 and yes, it's that whole idea that we have to remind ourselves constantly that this is temporary and there's a heavenly court and there's an eternal life and we'll rather a little bit of embarrassment. It's not easy, right? But the more we remind ourselves, the more we'll be willing to, you know, sacrifice some of our, uh, you know, self-esteem. Uh, on the contrary, it's showing that you have a self-esteem, but it, it, it will help you to say, I got to do the right thing, even Right? If someone else might uh, laugh at me or whatever it is or say something at me. Right? So that's the first quote that I want to talk about today. And this is not only Lush and Hard. This is, Bonnie, I'll take your question in one second. Right? Um, this is for everything. This is for taking on a mitzvah. I, I've had people that told me right, numerous times that they want to take something on, but you know they're they're still with friends or they're they're still hanging out with a certain crowd, and you know they always go Friday night stuff to this restaurant, and you know if he or she feels a little you know weird saying I, I don't want to go yet, I can't go anymore because you know I'm trying to keep Shabbat, or I'm trying to keep a little more kosher, or you know I'm, I'm starting, I want to start doing, <coughs> excuse me doing Friday night in my house. Whatever it is, if it's kosher, if it's Shabbat, if it's learning a little more, it's taking on a little more, but changing synagogues, right? Because you feel that you know you want to associate more with a certain, a different kind of uh, level of prayer, different connection, where, whatever it is. This is something that we have to remind ourselves on on all aspects of growth, right? Um, and this pertaining to us, it's referring to uh, lashon hara, but this is something that is across the board. Uh, something that we have to think about. Bonnie, go ahead. I'm just thinking, and I'm trying to like the fine line here. You know, if you embarrass somebody publicly, it's as though you killed them. That is correct. Okay, so this is totally different. Right, no, so that's that's something else. That's, we've talked about that before. That is something to someone else. Now we're talking about the individual, uh, a way for the individual to restrain him, him or herself uh, from from going ahead and being involved in a Lashon Hara conversation, right? Either speaking it or listening to it 
uh, without saying something, right? Um, so this is right. a, a, an idea that one could, you know, exercise within themselves to remind themselves, and in that way they'll have the strength to be able to overcome that peer pressure. Thank you. Um, anybody else? Okay, uh, we're gonna. Uh, I want to do page 145, the quota 145, and then we're going to skip to chapter four. Um, so the quota 145 is also a very powerful one and sort of along the la same lines, same idea, and that's why I want to talk about it. And the quote goes like this, may the, may, uh, and this is from Yochanan ben Zakkai, right, who was, uh, who was uh, one of the leaders of the Jewish people during the destruction of the second temple, right? And after the destruction of the second temple. And Rabbi Yochanan ben Zaka said like this, may you fear, may, you, may your fear of God be as great as you fear of your fellow man. And, and let me give some context to this, um, to this quote. And then we're going to start uh, page uh, 148. We're going to uh, skip to chapter five and start 148. So let me, are we doing, sorry, are we doing day 43 or not? No, we're doing. We're going to go to day forty-four. Um, so, so let me give a little context to um, to uh, to the quote uh, to the quote on on pay, uh, on the, uh, Rav Yochum and Zakkai. Rav Yochum, the Talmud tells Rav Yochum and Zakkai was on his deathbed, right? He was on his deathbed. Listen, w one day we'll all be on our deathbed. God willing, we'll be at one hundred and twenty, right? But uh, one day we'll all be on our deathbed, and he was on his deathbed, and his students came in, and we're talking about. Uh, the greatest leaders of the Jewish people, right? Or Bekiva was a student of Yochanan and Zakkai, and then others were students of Yochanan. Rabbi Yochanan and the students asked of Yochanan and Zakkai, bless us. We want a blessing from you, right? Greatest rabbi, he's on his deathbed, and at the most spiritual level, right? They want to take one more thing from their rabbi, from their rebbe, right? And what does he tell them? He, and, he, and who? don't forget who he's talking to. He's talking to the greatest people. He said, may the fear of God be as great as the fear of man. Right? As your fellow man. That's what was his parting words. Not, oh, may you succeed, right? And may you, uh, you know, connect to the holy, holy of holies and, uh, you know, give all these bracha and, and all these beautiful, you know, blessings that people like to give. He told them practical. May the fear of man be as great as the fear of God. And every time I, 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 I read this, right, I, I, I have, I have, Shivers going up my spine, right? Because, because we again we have to remember who he's talking to. <laughs> he's talking to these great rabbis, right? Who 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 they, they themselves, right? Of course, are on levels that are you know their fear of God, and and not only that, right? Not only that, it's Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai that feels that this is something that he has to say, right? And and, um, and 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 if I remember correctly, I might be misquoting it, but I think the the the, the Gemara says that this is something that Yochum and Zaka worked on his whole life. Right? So, like, what? What's going on here? So the answer, my friends, is, and this is why this is so scary, is because Rabbi Yochum and Zakai, right, is being very practical, and he's telling the these great rabbis something extremely practical, each person on their level. And, and it's along the same lines that we we're just talking about. Humans, humanity, we as people, we see each other, right? We feel each other, we hear each other, right? We could smell each other sometimes, right? But we are, we, we know each other's existence. And, and therefore, since we know each other's existence, right? So it is, Na the nature of how God created us that we want to fit in a crowd or we want to, we're scared of, uh, you know, of a policeman, right? I've always said this, you know, the policeman effect, you know, you see a cop on the other side of the highway and there's a, a cement barrier in between the two, you still slow down, even though it's impossible for him to get to you, right? Because uh, the next exit is five miles one way and uh, then you'll be way ahead and he'll never catch you, right? But still, it's naturally for mm -hmm. us slow down because you see the cop right you see the cop right you see other people in kiddish you see other people this you act in a certain way right we we know right it's human nature that you act cer certain ways when you're around your friends or around people and when you're not you're in a, on vacation somewhere or you're on a business trip somewhere or you're all alone somewhere 
let's be honest, it takes a lot more strength to act in the same way you are, right, in your Judaism and your and your attitude and who you are, right, than when you're around your friends, around your synagogue, around your, your peers, your family. That's just human nature. That's human nature. So what the depth of Yochanan and Zaka is saying that one of the ways for us to make sure that we are staying true, right? We are staying true to who we are, right? We're, we're staying true to who we are and we, we continue to do what's right and not fall prey to do what's wrong. In this context of our book, it's Lashon Hara, but it's anything is to remind ourselves that God is around everywhere, just like humanity is, just like people are, right? And that's what it means. The fear of God should be as great as fear of man. Of course, it's even greater, right? But at least to bring it back onto the level of fear of man means to say the realization that God is everywhere. Now, that's a level of amuna. That's faith. You're going to say, what are we talking about faith? We're not learning the laws of Lashon Hara now. Why are you giving me a class on faith? Right? If I wanted a class on faith, I would have gone, you know, I would have gone to another class. But I want to talk about good context of behavior and 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 ben adam lechamiro with man and his fellow, and to make sure that you don't slander other people and and and, and all the beautiful interactions of other people. That's the class that I came for. That's true. But if we don't continuously remind ourselves that God is constantly around, we don't behave the right way always. We don't always behave the right way. Because God's the one that told us how to behave. That's God's the one that told us how to behave. Right? And, and if we forget about God, if we lose our muna, we don't really believe in God that much, right? And we and we and and we say whatever it's around this, or we have, you know, when think about it, when you're by yourself, right? When you're not around other people, if you're if you know how to hide your IP on 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 your computer and you do cyber bullying or whatever it is, right? or you're just uh, in a strange place and you act in a certain way. Now, not everybody acts that way, but every individual acts a little different than they are around their friends. Let's be honest. You please mute yourself, right? right? Let's be honest. Every person acts a little different than they are around their friends. So if we, const- if we re-strengthen, right, that no, we believe that God is everywhere, right? We believe that God is everywhere. God is around. Therefore, there's nowhere in the world that we can be that he's not watching us. Now, it's a level. It's growth, right? And, and that's why we've mentioned in the past, the first halakha of Shulchan Aruch, the first law in the Code of Jewish Law, the first halakha, right? The first all the way, all the way in the beginning, right? It's, it's four books, right? Four sections, right? And each one has hundreds of laws, right? 613 commandments is just like uh, 613 categories, Right? It's a lot more, not to you know, overwhelm anybody, right? but we know it's a lot more, the intricates and the details. And so, so the, the 613 commandments, right? as we said, it's a lot more than that. And, and, and therefore, right? therefore the, what we have to remind ourselves is right? that the first halakha in Kodah Jewish law is what? It's not really a law. You know what it is? It's Sivisi Hashem Lenegni Sami. We're saying that God is in front of me. It's, it's, it's more like it's more like a, a musr, right? It's a musr idea, right? It, it's it's musr. It's we have to remind ourselves that God is constantly in front of me. God's constantly in front of me. And it says that if we remind ourselves that God's constantly in front of me, right? Then we then then it continues on the halakha. And the commentaries I'll ask, commentaries of of, of uh, on the code of Jewish law ask, why does the code of Jewish law start off? With Shvisias and the Nagisami. The path of the righteous to start off that way, right? Chavis uh, Avavos, the hearts, the, the, the duties of the heart, uh, Rav Desla, all these Musser books, right? They should start off with this idea. But Halakha, to start off with the laws of the TLC time, washing your hands in the morning or or blessings or things like that. Why does it start off with Shvisias and the Nagisami? And the commentaries explain is exactly what we're saying. Because of Yosef Cairo, Right? And the Ramara, Moshe Irsalis, the two, the two authors that combine is a code of Jewish law that we have together. They, they're telling us the secret and how to make sure, right? How to make sure that, that um, how to make sure that, that we have, uh, that, that we keep to the laws and we do what we're supposed to do. You know how that is? 
is by reminding ourselves and working that God is constantly in front of me. That wherever I am, God is around. And therefore, they put it in halakha, in the law, in front of all the technical laws, because to remind us that we have to constantly remind ourselves that there is a peer pressure, right? There is a fear that God's around. Now, we should convert that into love, into doing what we want, right? Like a child sees a parent, right? And say, oh, I want to I wanna do something because my parents are around. Right? That's the next level from fear to love, right? Yira to Ava, that's growth in our relationship with God. But bottom line is that God is around. And that's what this quote is saying. And that's the depth of Rabbi Yochanan Zaka is saying. He's saying, you are great rabbis, but you want to stay on that level? You want to keep on growing? You have to build that intensity. It, it's, it's, it's a process. It's not all or nothing. There's, okay, I know God's around. I know God's around on a higher level. I know God's around on a higher level, right? It's a more of a reality. And the greater reality that it becomes, the more you actually feel it wherever you are and the more you restrain yourself or make sure you do the right thing. So it's it's not uh, all or nothing and it's not ever stops. Rabbi Kiva, Rabbi Yochan Medzak, I have to constantly work on that. On their high spiritual level, on a greater level of, of recognition, on a, a greater level of reality. But we all have to work on it on our level. And the more we work on it, the more we realize that wherever we are, God is around. Number one, like we, the first quote we spoke about, the idea of it being a, a mini peer pressure in a good way. Number two is realizing that the same way you wouldn't do certain things in front of your friends because you're embarrassed or this, or they might talk to you about you, they might say something. Excuse me. Realize that God is always around and therefore we shouldn't do those same things in front of God. And that's why, that's why in, yes, the laws of Lashon Hara, the best way to make sure that you don't speak ill of other people, the best way to make sure that you don't judge other people, the best way to make sure that you, uh, that, that you do the right thing is reinforcing your relationship with God, reinforcing your, your realization that the existence of God is a reality, not some theological thing, but it's actually everywhere we are. And, and again, it's, all or, it's not all or nothing. It's a process. And each one of us are holding on a different level. And, and this is not only for lust and hearts, for everything, right? But this is this is something that we all have to reflect on and realize. And the more we do it, I promise you, the more you'll see within yourself that you're kinder to people, nicer to people, within the confines of what, again, as we spoke about, based in is allowed to do something because that's what the confines of what the Torah tells you, right? Within the confines of what the Torah tells you. But I promise you, you'll see that things will become easier as you strengthen your relationship with God. Okay, so that, those are the two quotes that I wanted to speak about today. Uh, I'm opening up for questions and answers before we start uh, day 44. Anybody, any questions, comments? Wow, you're all quiet. Okay, so we'll move on. Okay, day 44. All right, so we're starting the next chapter. The next chapter is compassion, feel for others. All right, so if you just turn the page back a little bit, all right, what does it mean to have compassion? All right, all right uh, and uh, and we're gonna look into life through his seeing life and experiences through other people's eyes. All right, the simple question: How would I feel? All right, how would I feel? And that's something that we all have to uh, reflect on. So the dilemma is like this, and I, I think this is something that is extremely common, right? and I know myself, right? this is something that comes up very, very often. And right? so until now, we were dealing with, um, the, the question is, if I'm allowed to say something, right? Now is a, the, until now we're dealing with the question, am I allowed to say something, right? Is it called toelis? Is it called for the benefit? Remember we gave uh, gave rules of what is considered toelis. It has to fit within the confines of the rules of toelis, right? Uh, did you speak to the other person? Did, did you make sure they, they actually did the, the wrong thing, right? Um, and uh, and onwards and all the different, uh, did you see with the own eye? It all make sure that it's truly true. All the different categories of what toelis were, right? And we gave other examples and when you're allowed to say something, right? Uh, different scenarios, right? Now, what we're dealing with over here is, I don't want to say something. Do I have to say something, right? So let's look at the case, okay? The case is like this. 
you notice your, your coworker is spending a good portion of her or his time, right? Working uh, her time, day, shopping and schmoozing on the internet, right? In effect, stealing from your employer, right? So this is not, remember the last time we spoke about a case where the person is uh, fumfering the books, right? Or whatever, right? So again, this is not, the company is not gonna go under or even if it, whatever the case is, right? But you see the person doing certain things that are not proper in the company. Now, uh, you may you behave towards her as if she is your good friend, right? While reporting her misconduct to upper management. So the question is like this, right? You as let we let's say this falls under the establishment of Toelis, right? Let's say it does, right? We spoke about for the last 147 pages, and right? we spoke about different ca categories of when you allow to. And I'm, we're not going through all of them, but let's say it does, right? You you go through your checklist, check, check, check. Oh, okay, it's Toellis. I'm allowed to go ahead and tell management. Right? Now, right, the question is, you want to stay a good friend, right? Right? You want to stay. You want to go do it anonymously. Right? You want to stay a good friend and you know have a you know smooth about uh, you know your kids or, or whatever it is. Right? And uh, you know maybe even neighbors or you're just friends from work and you know uh, you smooth a little bit within the confines during break or whatever it is within the confines of what's not considered stealing. Right? But this person is more excessive and they don't really do their work. Right? So are you allowed to go ahead and tell upper management? Right? without first speaking to the person. Because if you go speak to the person, right, you're probably going to ruin your friendship, especially if they don't listen. And then I had you go, go, then they know someone said something, they're going to know it's you. And so you don't want to lose your friendship. Right? But at the same time, it's Toelas, and you want to go ahead and say something. Right? So uh, what do you guys think, if you haven't read yet the uh, Halakha? Any thoughts? You guys are extremely quiet today. Okay. So, Hi. Well, this is Jim. I'll oh, talk. Jim. thank you. You're, uh, I talk too much anyway, I'm sure. Stop for a couple minutes. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't know if you were going to stop there, Avi. You're on a roll, man. Um, yeah, there's a way you can talk to people and not be offensive in something like that. Okay? So um, you can easily talk to that person and not ruin your friendship. You could say something like, Wow, I see, you know, you spend a lot of time shopping and stuff. How are you able to get your work done? And kind of, you know, I could see two co one co-worker saying that to another. Um, and that way you're not making a judgment at all. You're actually expressing, um, you're just asking a question that's not too, it's a little leading, but it's not. It would let the worker know that, Yes, I noticed you weren't doing it. Uh, I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just curious as to how you get it done, all your work done. Are you more efficient than, you know, maybe you're more efficient. Uh, that would be a little warning shot across their bow. And then at that point, they can decide whether they're going to continue doing that behavior. Um, that's okay, one. so so you're you're right, and that's always the best. But let's say you are not sure if they're going to listen or not, and then if they don't listen, I, I think I think you got to try. Okay, so so but but and I, I hear your point, and I, I'm not disagreeing with you, Jim. Right? You can't I'm bring out the question, um, you know, just a little stronger. Right? I'm, I'm not saying I disagree with you, right? but let's say you you you. You, you know this person already for a little while. And, you know, you your feeling is that, you know, they're, 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 they're probably not going to listen, right? They might listen, they might not. And there's a possibility that they that they, they won't, they will listen. Right? I, I'm just going to throw out now, as you're going to see in the last line of the, of the halakha, right? If you know for certain that they're not going to listen, right? Accept your rebuke. With, you know for certain, without a shadow of a doubt, right? You've heard other people to this person and they haven't listened all right so that's on day 71 all right the law is different there and that's the laws of rebuke that we we we, we touched upon in throughout the course all right that in the laws of rebuke if you know for certain the person's not going to listen to all right then you're not supposed to say something but we'll talk about it on day 71 right? but you're not sure you don't know they might listen they might not listen the problem with you is the problem is that let's say you do what what jim what you suggest right 
and uh, and and now they decide not to listen. So and now you're going to go and um, and and tell upper management, and you can ruin your friendship, and, and you don't want to do that. You don't want to ruin your friendship. So are you allowed to just not say anything and go tell upper management? So you're coming from perspective, Jim, and I'm not saying it's wrong. Also, you come from perspective, give the person the time of day and allow and give them the opportunity right, to, to change. Right. And that's it's a it's a it's a that's a noble thing, right? But sometimes unfortunately that ruins friendships. So are you allowed to say that's a noble? I'm not that noble, right? But I'm talking about now halakhically. Right? I'm not such a noble person. Right? That'll be noble. And if my friendship gets ruined, what could I do? Right? But I'm not that noble. I need friends and I like smoozing with this person. Right? And I don't want to ruin my friendship. So, but now, am I allowed to not say anything and then go ahead and tell upper management? The question is, am I allowed to? What's the right thing to do? You're 100% correct, Jim. It's better to say something to the person, right? Give them that warning, giving giving that you know uh, uh, fear opp the opportunity to to change before you say something. That is the right thing to do, the noble thing to do. And if your friendship gets ruined, that's on the other person, right? Because you're doing it in a nice way, not judging, not anything, saying hey, like you said, hey, I was just wondering. Right? But if you let's say you're not that you know you're not that secure with yourself, and you don't want to. You want to do the right thing, whatever halakha tells you, you'll do, right? But I'm not, the, I'm not the above, I'm not the above, you know, doing above the law kind of person, right? And especially when it's dealing with friends. So, am I allowed to not say something? What would be preferable is what you said, Jim, 100. percent right? the question is, what am I allowed to do? Or what am I not allowed to do? Am I allowed to just not say anything and go tell upper management? I'm in my right. Right, it's not called lashon hara because of to all the categories, right? Or am I not allowed to do that? Do you understand what I'm saying, Jim? I agree with you. What's preferable yes, to do? Yes, I, I think I think if the person is capable of change, that they need to be given a chance. Because once you go to upper management, then um, then it's going to be a real problem. Okay. Okay. Good. That's what you feel. Anybody else? Anybody else want to chime in? Come on, we're Jews. Everyone has an opinion. Come on. I know, but everybody's so quiet today. All their and I didn't mute anybody. They're all muted themselves. All right. Okay. I guess I will talk again. As Jim said, I've been doing a lot of talking today. All right. Uh, so so Jim uh, is is correct. It, let's look at the halakha. One may not speak lush and her about another person, even the toelas, for the benefit of preventing people from sustaining harm. Without trying, right? Without trying to re to reprove the other person first, without giving the other person the fair chance to to change, right? After all, the individual may very well change upon hearing the rebuke. Avoiding confrontation and acting towards that person in a way that hides your disapproval is prohibited, also because it is flattery. Right? First of all, there's another problem. You're not allowed to say look the other way or say, oh, whatever you're doing is okay or whatever, that's flattery, right? And, right, that is a prohibition. You're not allowed to uh, flatter someone when they're doing something wrong. While we okay, so, so let me let me interject. So my, my suggestion of wording was, was not right then because what I said was not a rebuke. Um, so, what, so what I would change after hearing that is to say, you know, you could get in trouble with all the time you're spending on the internet, um, doing all that other stuff, you you really may want to think about not doing that anymore. So, Jim, I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually, um, what you said originally, right? I'm gonna disagree with you and agree with you. What I mean to say is like this: at, there, there could be different stages. Stage number one is you could, you know, act a little ignorant. You're not approving what's what they're doing. What, what's wrong is right. Well, you just at you the way you presented originally was you asked it as a question. Hey, I'm just curious. How, like, how do you have time to do all this, right? Uh, have you like finished all your work, right? So you're not saying what's right and wrong. You're sort of bringing. You're not saying it's right to take. You're just asking how how you how are you able to do this in the right way? And if they say, ah, I'm not. I'm just cutting a little bit. So then you're right. Then you can say, right? Oh, okay, that's fine. But then you have to go ahead and say, you know, you could get in trouble for that. You know, that's the wrong thing to do, right? So what, what, what I'm saying, Jim, is that 
I think there's a step process that could be taken, right? That not to come harsh right away, right? But to sort of give that um, that opportunity for the person to recognize themselves and realize that people are noticing it, right? While if they don't change or they say, yeah, whatever, it's good, the company is a million dollar company, what do they care, right? Blah, 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 right? So then, yes, then you're not allowed to say, okay, that's fine, right, whatever, right? Then you have to go and say, you know, that's actually wrong. That's where the flattery comes in. That's where proving, uh, uh, saying, showing that even with your, uh, your, your actions or your, your facial expressions and uh, that what they're doing is right, that's where it's wrong, right? So you sort of could still start off the process by trying to build them up, right? Trying to get them to recognize themselves before you actually have to tell them straight out. But that being said, while we should always treat others with respect right, and concern, we should not pretend to approve of their accent when there is not, or is, where it's not the case, right? Furthermore, right, there is a positive commandment to rebuke one's fellow, right? So, there's a positive commandment to rebuke one's fellow. And we've been, you know, talking about it here and there about different ideas of rebuke, when it's good, when it's not, as we said in the last line, if you know for certain they're not gonna listen, then you're not allowed to rebuke, and we'll talk about that later, right? But there is, Straight out, a positive commandment to rebuke. Now, it has to be done in a, in, in a good way. It has to be done, make sure that you're the right person to do it. And this whole category of, of who's allowed to rebuke and who's not allowed to rebuke, right? And how to rebuke. Right? But that being said, right, the commentaries explain that one of the ideas of also rebuking other people is also strengthening with yourself that you don't approve of what you know that it's not what you approve. You know that this is not what God wants us to do. Right, and therefore, by 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 you standing up for what's right, your your number one is your showing that you believe that what what is right and wrong, right? What God wants us to do, and also you're making sure that other people know what's right and wrong, right? Um, in a respectful way, in a not a judgmental way. And 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 this is another whole topic within itself. And, and unfortunately, we're living in a society where people uh, don't realize that you could rebuke someone and still respect them. And you could disagree with someone and not be judgmental. And you could, uh, you know, you could, you could say what you believe is right and wrong, right? And, 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 and allow, and you said your piece and other people, you know, could feel differently and you could have a disagreement, right? But at the same time, you're entitled to voice your own opinion right, in a respectful, non-judgmental way. But what's right and wrong, right? And and if you don't, if you disagree with me, we could have a discussion about it. We could have an intellectual discussion about it. But I'm not going to look at you individually any different or not, right? Uh, you know, certain you know certain things might change, right? Uh, you know, if if. Uh, would I be able to eat at your house? Would I not? Would I be able to, you know, do certain things? And and or or, or do I want to hang out with you because you're always talking negative about other people or you know your uh, or, or other things like that, right? Are you going to be the person that we call up when we need a donation? Probably not if you're a miser, right? But I'm not going to judge you, and I'm allowed to say what's right and wrong. And and that's the halakha. That's what the halakha is telling us over here, and 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 it, that's coming from a different perspective, right? But the way it's coming in over here is the own person themselves. And this happens so many times. We don't want to say something because we don't want to rock the boat with this friend, or we don't want to the community, or we don't want to right. Uh, we don't want to say anything because we, we're we're the ones that might get hurt. So that is a calculation. Right. If you know that this person is powerful or whatever it is, and they're going to switch the whole thing on you, and you're going to be the one that's going to get hurt, so that's another point. That's another conversation, right? And one has to put that into calculation. But if not, and most times it's not like that, right? Then you have to stand up for what you believe is right and wrong, right? And and that's one of the important things of this halacha is telling us, right? But I, I want to take a one more thing out of this. Halakha, and then and then we'll end with this, and we'll open up again for questions or comments or, or whatever anybody wants to say, right? And this is also an important important thing to remember, that you're not allowed to be two faced. You're not allowed to be a two faced, right? It says um, it says um, it says lo sisna achicha bilvavecha. You should not hate your fellow person bilvavecha in your heart. And the commentaries explain. <clears throat> that if you have a problem with someone, you're supposed to tell them. 
It can't just be in the heart. You can't pretend like oh, everything's all good, right? And then it's just question, question, right? Or you tell your one friend or your spouse or whatever it is, or internally, right? It's being two-faced. You're not allowed to. When you tell that person what the problem is, you have to make sure it's done in the right context. You have to make sure that it fits within the boundaries of halakha, what you're allowed to say, what you're not allowed to say, and how you're supposed to say it. And make sure you're collective. And make sure you're not angry when you're saying it. Yeah, there's a whole slew of rules of how you're allowed to say something, but at the same time, you're not allowed to be two-faced. You're not allowed to be two-faced, right? And 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 this is something that's it says it says um, the brothers, right? I'm not going into the whole uh, you know uh, depth beyond this the, the selling of Joseph, right? The, the the ten tribes selling Joseph. It's a complicated piece of Talmud, a Torah, sorry. And uh, it, yeah, the storyline is pretty straightforward. But it's depth upon depth of of what happened there and and why. And I gave a whole class once on it. But whatever it is, right? The Torah tells us. Right, that they, they couldn't look at him in peace. It means to say that they they did not want to hold their grudge internally. Right, they looked at what they did, and therefore they acted, and they felt they did the right thing. Right, a whole discussion why they felt they did the right thing, and and again, that's a whole class within itself. Remember, we we're talking about the twelve tribes over here. We're not talking about me and you. Right, we're talking about the twelve tribes over here. But at the same time, the Commentaries learn out from there again the same idea that you have to you you have to express what you're feeling, not necessarily only in a psychological way in an emotional way. And right? it's healthy to express what you're feeling. It's not healthy to bundle things up, right? but in a halakhic way also that you're not allowed to be two faced. Now you also have to be careful not to say everything that's on your mind. Right, as I said, there's rules. And just because you feel something or you don't like the way the person looks, oh, you look ugly. I don't want to hold that inside of me. Right? Come on, right? There's rules of what you're allowed to say and what you're not allowed to say and what's part of the category of, of, of you're not allowed to hold back. But this is something, this is an example of that idea also. You're not allowed to not tell something to the person because you want to try to keep that friendship, right? And then go ahead and stab them in the back and go tell upper management, right? It's a similar kind of, concept right uh to this to this idea so there's a lot of different things that we spoke about coming out of this halakha right um of of, of how we're supposed to interact with other people and and this is what we're going to be talking about again the next compat feeling fathers seeing things through other people's eyes how are we able to interact with other people on the next stage of uh, making sure that we stay within the confines of proper conduct with interaction with other people in our speech right and or lack of speech um, okay, thank you everybody for joining us. I'm going to turn off the recording of... Uh...